It's a good start. Hi guys, how are we doing? Um, Hello. We are on week three. Three. Um, this week is particularly philosophical. We mm. can say it's actually quite a hard concept. Mm. So I'm gonna go through all of this. Um, please, as you listen to this, um, take notes of things that you don't understand, mm -hmm. that you want more explanation, that you want me to expand or discuss with you. This is the trick of this. It's going to be a lot of abstract things, concepts and ideas, and a lot of key terms or keywords. Yeah. But again, look at these words as a way of analyzing, as a tool to open ways of thinking. Okay? And this um, le particular lecture in the theory we're looking at underlies a lot of what we're doing on both past, present, future and working with difference um, in terms of theory. So, yeah, it's important. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to make this big. By the way, not all the weeks are going to be so theoretical or philosophical, but this is kind of your cement yeah, where you're going to start your foundation. Your foundation. Yeah. So we're going to talk about power on this course, but in reality, We're going to talk about structuralism and post-structuralism. Mm -hmm. And structuralism mm -hmm. um, have been also called semiotics, mm -hmm. or, and it's the basis of communication theory, system theory, and other things that we're going to look at. It. And post-structuralism is people that use the theories to actually talk about social material things mm -hmm. and politics. It's very political. And both terms have the word structure in them, right? So we're talking about the structures of how we interact as humans and as a collective. Yeah. So if you're going to remember two words for the whole thing, remember sign and signifier. Mm. What that means in reality? It means unit and rule. Mm. For example, one of these um, rhombos or figures here is the unit and the rule is how it relates to the others. You have one yellow in the top, one brown in one side, one white that is in the middle and all of that. For the people that create like websites or mm. have designed some website, it's basically your icon and what it does. Yeah. In programming, this is ba it's basic. So a structuralism is based on a unit and a rule unit rule unit rule unit rule that make a structure and this structure is how society works so in the enlightenment um where some of the scientifics were creating sciences the beginnings of biology the beginnings of calculus the beginning of math mm -hmm. and, and and presented it not just as the universe science but different disciplines we have Biko trying to create a science of society and he's not important, you don't have to remember this name or this year. What I want you to remember is that Biko realized something that he calls sapienza poetica. And it, all what it means is the knowledge in poetry. Mm -hmm. And sapienza poetica has to do with something that is not physical, that is metaphysical because it's a sign. And it's this idea that the stories, the myths, religious stories, mm -hmm. Um, the all this uh, poetry mm. have a moral, have a lesson, have a knowledge. Mm. And maybe it was a way for our grandfathers to teach us something, mm. to teach us how to behave in society, to teach us bravery, to teach us values, to teach us how we should do better, how we should be cleaner or how should we and and in the ways that we tell stories to each other the way that we try to understand each other or understand the ideas that other people have or the problems that other people have yeah we do this it's not always direct it can be through stories so the kind of meanings behind those stories that we have as a shared knowledge exactly so he was uh, Biko was looking particularly at myth and stories and poetry uh, in different religions and in different cultures, and how always the vehicle or the way to tell the story generation after generation is with these images. And it went to a point that you don't have to know the whole story, you just see an image to get the 
the knowledge. For example, in Catholicism, if we say a cross, or we already know that this is a Catholic value or, or something like that. So we don't know how to do the detail of the whole story. With one image, you already get the knowledge. And that's the kind of the symbol can represent that knowledge in itself. Right. For example, I don't know about Buddhism or Chinese stories, but I know about Catholicism. Mm. I was raised Catholic and Adam and Eve is very important for the whole society. Mm. And from that, you get things like well, every family has to have a relationship between a man and a woman mm -hmm. and the scene and how the world is created in seven days and all of this you can synthesize it with maybe just a picture of Adam and Eve or a depiction of an apple sometimes. And it, if we look at this again, it also talks about the place of women in society, about their role as temptress. So it affects a story that was written however many thousand years ago affects how we live today right, today right now so this is what women or the structuralist men by shapes so there are simple there are simple shapes that have not just a lot of content a lot of moral but that are shaping us right now mm -hmm. that have been shaping society for years and years and they still have a power today yeah. think about princess stories, the role of the woman and the role of the man. Think about the idea of hero, the idea of revolution. The evil witch, right? The kind of the, the pagan ideas of like who is evil and who is good. But also things about little things that we do in our everyday. For example, I see you and I say, hello, how are you? So many times you say, fine, thank you. And I didn't mean to actually know how are you <laughs> so in england this is a really good point in england if someone says are you you're right they aren't actually expecting you to tell them if you tell them that's quite odd but if you go yeah i'm all right and you normally say you're right and you go yeah i'm all right and then sometimes you might go again you're right and you go yeah i'm all right <laughs> but it's a mechanism to say yeah i'm actually right right now there's nothing i really need to talk about so these are we are surrounded by them these are creating a lot of relationships. For example, if I get, present you a heart and you type in your emoticons a heart to someone, it means that you like their idea, that you like them, that you feel romantic about it, that this is good around us. But in reality, our hearts doesn't look like that. No. Our heart, uh, that's a total made up symbol. It's also not where love is, right? Exactly. If you think about it, you know, in terms of neurology, actually, those or, chemical or emotions, belly. or actually in our stomach, that's what <laughs> we've been finding out recently. Or, or skin. But it, so the heart don't have any actual scientific meaning, but this is true. If I send you a heart, it means I'm with you for something. So, or, or I like your idea, or I like you in that moment. And you can see this music, the heartbeat, is a fundamental rhythm for most things. So we are surrounded by shapes or by instance that shaping us yeah. and create relationships in society. So a big figure of the structuralism is Susu. I don't want you to um, remember the date, so his name, I just thought it would be interesting that you see his face. He was thinking that, for example, this is very true for language. Mm. He applied this moral of shapes and, and powers of shape to shaping into language. For example, if I tell you Three, well, that was the example that he gave. If I tell you three, here have a very specific key tree in his mm -hmm. mind. And you will probably have a very specific tree in your mind. Mm -hmm. If you tell me three, I will list in my mind, I have a mango tree. Because when I grew up, I was surrounded <laughs> by mango I trees. I've got weeping willow in my head by a river. I know the exact one as well. I don't even know what a weeping willow is. <laughs> So it, it means that what I tell you, each of us have a slightly different images of us. But, the, but there is an agreement that the word tree, that these four letters there, there is a social agreement that that is going to mean a lot of trees. So the agreement on that, uh, the agreement in the language is what he was looking at. And so what's the tree? Is that the symbol or the, the word there in terms of units and pattern? The, the, the unit is, a, um, is two things. It's the thing that you read, so yeah. there's four words there, yeah. Yeah. that is the unit. But that unit, if you look inside, it has an image 
and an agreement. Right, right, right. So yeah, yeah. what the Saussure did is not just that there are units that are shaping us, he yeah. went to look microscopic in the unit. So the unit is something that you can see yeah. that he calls phenomena yeah. and it's the surface, but also there's the agreement. Mm. That agreement that all the trees, mango trees, willows, and probably the trees that you have in China mm. or somewhere else, all of them are going to be described by four words, four letters. Yeah. So it's an agreement. It's a social agreement there. Yeah. And the same happened, for example, with other things like this M. Everybody knows that this is the sign of McDonald's and it's an agreement that when you see that, mm. you probably think about Coca-Cola, burgers, mm. fast food, American culture. And actually one of the things that McDonald's does every year is spend hundreds of millions of dollars to make sure that that symbol says what it does. So they have, sorry, that they can control what that symbol does. Because a lot of people, that can mean repression, violence, death animals you know it depends on who you are right? ache. but actually yeah belly aches so <laughs> i hate mcdonald's still when i see mcdonald's it does give you a certain sense of comfort in another country because they spend a lot of money to make it that's so it. we have a sign that is just an m mm. it's a flat thing yep. it's a surface a yellow but you have thing. a social also other things mm -hmm. making happening to you so this is the unit and this is in conflict this is changing this is a struggling. All the, all the all the agreements. Yeah, they're not set. Are they they like, are not set because we're humans. We're creating these. They're going to change all the time, all the time. And Cicero also says that because of that, language is what it constitutes the word. He was saying that all the structure, all that network, is made out of words, mm. out of language, because it's the vehicle that we can talk to each other. We can tell the story. We can read. We access knowledge. You come to university. All is in language pay. I'm talking to you about this. All of this is language pay. So, so, so and all the semiotics were saying that this is a structure that make us one things that make us desire to make us dream to make us know better to make us graduate and make money all of this it's is human right is based on knowledge yeah. so this is a structure of language that determines social cultural historical and political situations so levi strauss was saying yes if all of this is true there is no way that we look at things by the, by themselves. Yeah. We have to look the things in the larger structure. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's no way that we just go to McDonald's and look how the McDonald's restaurant work. We have to look at how the McDonald's means in relationship with culture, yeah. with market, in terms where of food production in ways we consume food in terms of like advertising, even things down to colour structures. History of fast food in America and how they colonize the war. And interestingly recently, those things completely changed, right? The minute COVID came in, how we interact in those spaces, how we get food, what fast food means to us, changes instantly, exposes that, right? So that was the big thing of Levi Strauss that again, you don't have to remember the name of the year, just look at his face and he said, mm. remember to look things in the structure because those things are not stable, stable. there are mm. no uh, um, a structure or solid, they are changing by a structure. So remember to look at the structure. And one of the things you'll be doing quite a lot in even some of the other units is looking at system design. Right, which mm -hmm. is exactly that to a point. It's considering the wider components of the system, how they affect the thing that you're doing. So from something really simple, like we have units that shape in us, the whole cybernetics and information yeah, theory right. come up, the whole way that you program computers, um, system theory, you just say it, the people that study artificial intelligence, biology, because this is a system, and the way that molecules talk to each other is based on this. Traffic and, flow would be one, right? Anthropology, sociology. Uh, sports studies is probably a huge one as well. Literature, film <laughs> study, advertising, mic market, yeah. you name it. Everything is based in communication and in semiotics. But basically the main themes are language. So everything that is language based, biology, knowledge, market, Im imagination, the way that you imagine, why you imagine or Creative you dream. Process. Exactly. Yeah, all those things. But also it's been um, 
it's been used to study government. Right. And we can really see this in COVID, how each of the governments tackled to different metaphors. For mm -hmm. the, I remember that when the COVID was, when we all were in lockdown here, the, the queen come and talk to us. Like if you, <laughs> if he was in the, if we were in a war, we were in a war yeah, with this yeah, invisible yeah, enemy. And in other cultures, they handle it very different. So is that also how the government shaped things is using this sort of invisible agreement? Oh, invisible metaphors. Yeah, and manipulating those invisible agreements as well, right? Yeah. So this is one resource that you can... Um, put this up on the uh, board for you. Yeah, it's just a, a paper that really talks about structuralism really easy. And again, this isn't easy stuff, none of this. It's complex. I'm learning as we do this, but it's very important. So now we're going to go... This is a structuralism, and now we're going to go to post-structuralism. Why is it post-structuralism, not just something else? Um, post-structuralism is because... What should we wait? Foucault, that go, is this guy, that I really want you to remember his name yeah, and his year. Foucault, yeah. um, and not just his face, he was very cool anyhow. We're thinking, yeah, well, all of this structure that you're presenting and you're studying mm -hmm. is not just in language. Mm is in building spaces, is in things, is in objects. artifacts, is in objects, and is in practices, and is in the way that we relate to each other, and they are very, very political. Right. So it's not just that there is a network there with, made out of language that define us, yeah. is that there are things and there are buildings and there are spaces they create those agreements and, structures. and their interest of making people fit in there or not fit in there. So in a way the post and the post structuralism is they're taking structuralism and building on it yeah. and changing it as yeah. opposed to something radically new, hence the post. Yeah, right. it's just the bases are the structure yeah. but this is to do a study something else. Maybe. So he was saying, yes, there is a system of representation and there is an agreement in the middle. Even though I think in a mango tree and you think about willows, we agree that this is a tree. But also, whoever is more powerful, you or me, are going to convince the other that it's a willow or it's a mango tree. Mm. So it's not just that there is a system of representation, but it's a power struggle. Yeah, what is a man? What is a woman? What is a tree? What is, what a, is a kid? What is happiness? Exactly. So whoever right, has citizen, more power, right. whoever yeah. have more space, whoever have more thing, more resources are going to define that. Yeah. So and they're gonna call it the truth. They're gonna call it that's real. They're gonna call the it that's natural. Reality, the everyday, the as we know, the common sense, the, the common sense, the fundamental truth. Because it's the, like it is. The religious with more, truth, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is even science says that. Yeah. Um, you can think about how many for 300 years they were, science were convinced that black people don't have soul. I mean, 100 years ago, you wouldn't be teaching with me. I wouldn't be listening to you. Exactly. You know I mean? Because it was science, because it was the truth. <laughs> yeah. So, what made this power relationship invisible, inaccessible, the thing that made that we totally don't think about it mm. is because it's dressed or it's been referred as the truth, yeah. as knowledge, as science. And that means any dissenting voice against that is not the truth, it's not natural, right? Yes. Sorry, that's <laughs> really jumped in there. It's fine. Uh, so, Kira, what she's doing? She's washing her hair. Where? Uh, at home, in the shower. She's just washing her hair, warm water, a bit of shampoo maybe. Yes, yeah, washing her hair, pretty normal. I agree with that. However, 43% of the population in the world don't have running water and cannot shower. Don't have a toilet in their home with running water. <laughs> Let alone warm water. Let alone warm water. to that level, right? Wow. So even though there is an agreement on there, yeah. this agreement, this image means that because it was posed, but the 57 Mm. Yeah, 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 no, that's right, no, 57, that's right. No, 47%. Yeah. No, 57. Oh, uh, for, for the people that have that. So that, it puts you in a position of privilege, in a position of power, mm -hmm. and you have the space, and you have the voice, and you have the means to make this picture meaningful. And so what you're doing is making 
sell as the truth for most for a huge portion of the population where it's not a truth right it's not just a truth but what you're making is that this big portion of the population feel bad about it yeah. feel ashamed about feel it feel unnatural feel wrong feel shame and maybe it's that the other part of the population is having delicious river swings mm -hmm. and maybe it's that they have having really nice jumps in the river but we are saying that this is the norm yeah. and there are millions of norms around us in our everyday since we wake up since the fact that we wake up with alarm with a clock they sleep in a bed and all of this change in culture and this is again for so the way that i have my dinner is not the way that these people are the having... way that we're talking to you right now right in terms of conversation um the fact that we're wearing clothes in society right the fact that we eat the things we do we have tea at a certain time we're discussing having a cup of tea in England, having a very particular meaning and particular resonance, as opposed to, say, in China, or as opposed to India, or as opposed to Venezuela, right? So some things, some practices like eating, sleeping, going to classes, learning, uh, is accepted in some places and is not accepted in other places. Uh, for example, I know in China it's very totally uh, as, uh, it's necessary to go to have a nap after lunch. So everybody have the nap after lunch. After lunch in England, I have a sandwich and keep working. And if I fell asleep like that in a class, it would be really rude. Really rude. You would have every right to go to my boss and tell tell them that I fell asleep during the class. And we would lose our jobs. Yeah, we lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be a really serious thing, right? So what Foucault was saying is that these structures are leaving people out mm. and that people are not just out, are marginalized, are hurt, are, hurt, are mm. categorized as poorer, as abnormal, abnormal uh, freaks, Freak. as dirtier, Disgusting. as uh, as poor people that don't have these, or poor people that don't have the shower, uh, or poor people that doesn't fit here. Or women, or people who, you know, are gay, or the wrong colour, or the wrong clothes. Or oh, terrorists, or, or terrorists. dangerous. Yeah, dangerous ideas, you know, radical. This is stabilised an idea, so Foucault is really asking these questions. What is normal? What is normal? <laughs> and no, no. So he, he doesn't ask what is normal. He asks Sorry. what the normal height. Yes, there you go. What's the power relationship that makes something to be normal yes. and something not to be normal? So, yeah, he was saying that these uh, structures are very much power structures. Yes. And the way that he uses this course, so please don't use your dictionary uh, meaning, it's not this course that is a speech. He was saying that absolutely everything, every space, every building, every way of doing things have a discourse. For example, my passport. Yeah. I have, I may have a passport that means that I cannot get into places. I I may have a passport that means I may be illegal. Mm. I may have a passport that means some people have better rights than me. Mm -hmm. I may have a passport that means you're welcome to have holiday here. Yeah, you can come in, we're okay with you, you can't, you're going to get put in prison. So, yeah. all of these things is okay. this course. Just a really quick example I was thinking of, particularly as you guys are just starting, the Wills Memorial, right, which is that huge tower in the university at the beginning of the university at the top of Park Street. That has meaning, right, it has effect. When I see that, I feel, well, when some people come in, I've talked to students last year, they feel like it's very grand, it's about university, it's about England, it's about history, it's about authority. I look at that, and I think about the Wills family, and I think about slavery, and I think about domination, and I think about male dominated universities, but that's what's in my head. I also have civic pride in Bristol, and it makes me think of Bristol, but those things have different discourses and they have different effects on the person. So someone coming to that who's poor, who's never expected to go into university, is going to feel potentially afraid and excluded. As someone who's privileged, who's used to universities, they might walk in that space and feel empowered. Right. But it's still the same fundamental building made of stone. But that also happened with, for example, how you behave in yes. spaces, yes. how you behave in the train, how you behave yeah. in the plane, how you behave in the school. I bet, 
I bet that you right now are listening to us, not in the same way that you are listening if you were in the classroom. Definitely. So we're you, not speaking in the same way. You probably are in your pyjamas, you probably yeah. are <laughs> in your bed watching this with your phone really near to us, yeah. and we are in a very different position than if we were together. So this is this course, not just the things that you say, but the things that are in things building the spaces and things. So the things, the more problematic things about Foucault, I resume it because Foucault wrote millions and millions of essays, but he was very concerned about pleasure and sexuality, about public and private, and health and education. And there is one other, he was very concerned about law and prison, prisons. Right, yeah, law and prisons. Yeah. yeah, so for example, he was saying that sexuality is a social construct the way that we think about sex, the way that we get turned on with sex is all given to us. It's, it's, it's not a natural thing. It's not a natural thing, but it says it's natural. It's not. It's been society have made that a structure for us to want that, mm. to desire that. For example, in the Roman times, in the cities that the Romans construct, sexuality was a, a, a space in society and they built bath where people can have sex openly in the middle of the city and when sure. it was a public display. So if you were having sex with men or women or or younger people. Or young men, which was men having sex with young men was a totally It was totally normal, it was not just acceptable. It was they wanted that. Yeah, it was an expected thing. It was an expected thing. And you will have sex just before or after talking about politics or having big decisions about the city. So the fact that now we have sex in the privacy of our room. And if we had sex in a swimming pool, you would be arrested. It would be abnormal, it would be disgusting, you would be a freak, you would be abnormal, right? So what Foucault was saying is that there is an apparatus. And again, this is a key term. Don't look at it in the dictionary. Foucault meaning of apparatus is very different. And this is an apparatus where society control you. Society make shapes you. So he was talking about, about docile subjects. So imagine when you train your dog to not pee in the house, or don't mm -hmm. shoe your shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same with humans. So the apparatus of societies are school, prisons, hospitals, science, education. And there's a reason that the modern kind of schooling system in England happened about the same time as the Industrial Revolution, and that the schooling system fitted the factory times and the workers' times, and also in terms of teaching the skills to work in those factories to produce capital for someone that wasn't you. Right. So it means that society have apparatus to shape things. So he's moving from the idea of this structure that is kind of neutral, that is kind of not very dangerous, to the idea of apparatus. That apparatus control the structure and controls us and wants us to marry a man and have a son and a pet and a house and a holiday and a car. And it's, would you say that? The difference with Foucault is that that's a that there is someone actually purposely controlling that. Yeah. So the people that have the power, the people that understand what those sort of leverage points or those those symbols or structures are, and then they're able to then adapt them. Or he he doesn't say there is people. He says there is apparatus, Just, right. and these apparatus are interconnected. So these apparatus may have a specific interest, mm -hmm. and that is um, sure by government, science, yeah. school. So I suppose what I'm getting at is it's not always that it is a purposeful apparatus, as in that I have sat down and gone, I will suppress women in this way, but that can be formed from multiple different yeah. apparatuses and different kind of discourses that form this as a whole, right? Yes. So we're going from the idea of a structure that is there, it's simple, it's made of language. Yeah, it's there and it's innate and it's... But this idea that the structure is generative and productive is creating us all the same. Always and whoever doesn't fit is poor, is dangerous, is um, marginal, is different, yeah. is a criminal. And it's invisible. It's invisible. We try to invisibilize that structure, invisibilize everything that doesn't fit on it. So this is a lot to take in in there what this means for us and for this project and for us as innovator we're gonna do 
but in next week. Yeah. But for now, I just want you to think about this. Things about sign and signifier, about unions and rules, things about agreements, social agreements, yeah. things about apparatus and, and structures. And one of the things you can do is just when you go through your day, right, the things that you do every day that you take for granted, you never think about, think why you do them. Why do I walk down that road? Why do I have a shower now? Why do I love who I love? Why do I, <laughs> I don't know, it gets you asking about what structures are in place that are making me do these things. So Foucault was saying there is no way that we get out of the structure. Oh, no, no, no. There is absolutely no way that there is a structure. The most um, rebellious act of, of being in the structure is to see it. So if you pay attention, you start seeing those structures all around you. So yes. we're going to go this week to walk in the park. Yeah. So yeah. try to see structures, yeah. not just build the structures, but discursive structures. And I think much of what we're going to do with you in terms of the challenges, why this is a foundation, is that we are offering methods, tools for exposing those structures, I think, or examining at least, or playing with those structures. Right, that's what we offer here, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Did you put a call down? Yeah, bye. <laughs> bye, yeah, bye.